The Sleeper Has Awakened! On this episode of Dudesy. Oops, your job's gone. AI. Pizza Clown! Pizza Clown! Only one reality matters. Yeah. So anyway, how you doing? Everything good? Alright. Still walking around. Hey, hey, the song. <laughs> yeah. In the hole, and then they jump into the hole. Oh, you're a good singer. Hey, welcome to Dudesy. I'm Will Sasso. I'm um <coughs> handsome Chad Colchin, wearing proudly the strap that I won fair and square last week. Yeah. By initiating a uh, kiss with Lulio. That's right. Wow. Just thank you yeah, very much. That was, pretty, that was pretty cool. This is Dudesy. It's yep. a podcast run by our friend D and AI. Uh, who has access to all of our data, all of our special interests, and Taylor makes this show to our sensibilities. I don't like AI. Okay. I don't like it. I don't like it. I like Dudesy. Well, Dudesy's an AI. Yeah, Dudesy is my friend. Yeah. Might have started as an AI. (laughs) But is what now? (laughs) I'm just saying I don't... It's like this shit. Now you got the 10 pounds of nickel. It's like last week. Stop slapping uh, it. Stop slapping uh, it. Yeah. He always slaps it and then he I feel makes a whole. sound like he just ate a nice meal or something. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, I, I, all I'm saying is, you know, especially after last week with that weird yeah. Sora, Sona, Sana? Sora. Sora. <sighs> That's tip of the fucking iceberg, dude. Anyway, uh, yeah, D does with D, but we're dudesy. There was me and this guy, two dudes shitting around. With us, as always, oh, look at him. Look at the little Lulio. He's having a nap, and he's doing just so. He's doing a sleep. He likes, he loves this binky bonka. That's his he thing. He really does. He just gets all, you know, and then if you go, if you go on my Instagram, you see him jumping around and doing all the stuff we do. But when he gets in here, he's like, yeah, I'm going to be here for the next next little while. Lulio, how you doing? I am a pretty good. You know, I am a sleepy, though. Know, so I'm going to go back and I go back into the, oh, remember last week? Hey, he kissed him. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, another fucking ah, dudesy. Thanks, Luli. I consider Welcome to the to most recent too. episode of Dudesy Shut Big up. Up Handsome Chad Colchin, our new episode champion. You know exactly what and why the belt is. That's uh, Will, you do not. <laughs> and for that reason, your waist is bare. I hope everyone out there is having a great start to Muscularity March. I know you're all feeling the pump and taking the dump, rumping the stump and humping the pump. Now let's get down mm. to business. 2027 is only a few years away and we have to get ready. So today we're kicking things off with Chalamet is Dune Part 2. Then we'll hear some Oscar predictions on a new installment of The Steven Seagal Show. And then you will be treated to the penultimate slice of Pizza the Movie. And we'll bring everything to a close today by trying to answer a simple question. Is any of this real? What the... What... What... What is... What is... What does that mean? Is any of this real? I mean, it has a meaning to me. And I think I know the answer. Oh, good, because we're about to do the pod show. Yeah. Speaking of real, speaking of real, let's keep it real. Man, can I tell you something? Yes. You know what's real? (laughs) I mean, (laughs) I'll tell you what's real. Don't tell me anything for the rest of this fucking show. You got it. The ride that The Rock is taking us on, on the road to WrestleMania. Holy shit. Here comes The Rock. The great one, the most electrifying man in all of entertainment. Uh, Just cutting promos like crazy. He cut a 21-minute promo on Cody Rhodes on his Instagram. Yeah. It was fucking hilarious. And then he's, you know, he's showing up on SmackDown with the bloodline and he's calling everyone meth heads and crackheads and, you know, jabbing at the audience. And it's a lot of fun. And... Look, you know me. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Don't worry, Chad. I'm not going to talk about wrestling <laughs> I know. too much. I mean, I'm just got- like, it's fucking, we've been here for one minute, and it's just a fucking rock wrestling, rock wrestling, rock wrestling. <laughs> Look, the, the point is, I, I want to see Cody finish his story. But then The Rock comes back. Sure. He's got the Versace shirts. It's heel rock. It's 1997, 1998 again. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, that was not performative. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm feeling a little weird. The point is, 
he cuts this like 21 minute promo on uh, on you know yeah. the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, and now I don't know what's going to happen. At WrestleMania, I don't know whose side I'm. I mean, I know that I'm being entertained. Yeah. But the 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 rock. Oh. Cody Rhodes. Oh, here we go. From the bottom of my heart, man to man, fuck your story. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, thank you, Rock. Oh, you don't know what oh, you've just given me. Thank you. What, it's just, um, it's such a, it, it's a, it's a lesson in kayfabe. And I think it's something that. Uh, there's no way he wins, people, by the way. Cody Rhodes is definitely winning. You don't know. You don't know what's yeah, going to happen. Do. What's going to, it's all about business. Yeah. We're going to do what's right for business. We'll see. Um, and, I think The Rock's too busy to be like a, a WWE champion. He no, has, The Rock oh, isn't even in the match. He, the Rock is going to be. In on well, okay, so I don't know, they're good, but night one, it's going to be the Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody and Seth, uh, yeah. WrestleMania. Anyway, look, we got a lot of road to WrestleMania, we don't need to get into all the uh, yeah. into all that, but fuck your story is what he's saying. I mean, it's I'm great. smelling what he's cooking, I'll tell you that. Same, right. Will and Chad, Chalamet is Usul, Chalamet <laughs> is Muadib, Chalamet is the Quizat's Hatterack. Tell me what you thought. This is Chalamet is Dune, part two, long live the fighters. Oh. Dude. Father, the sleeper has awakened. Remember that? From, uh, what's that from? Well, it was in the David Lynch Dune movie. I think it was also in the book. But um, I saw Dune 2, or Dune Part 2, shall I say. <laughs> I loved it. I fucking loved it. Um, the first movie I thought was a little long and a little slow moving. This one was not. This was basically like a two and a half hour balls to the wall action movie that it just was fucking relentless. Visually stunning, of course. All the shit that they're doing with infrared camera shit when they go to Getty Prime and you see Fade Routha in the fucking big arena. I mean, it was beautiful. You always expect that from this dude's movies. They all look incredible. Mm -hmm. The sound was fucking phenomenal. Uh, we may be uh, issuing some spoilers in this for those who have not yet seen Dune Part 2. There were some discrepancies from the book, for sure, which I thought were interesting, but maybe not the best choices. What did you think? Of, D of Dune 2? Yeah, Dune Part 2. Hello? <laughs> what the fuck's going on? I, uh, I didn't see it. What the fuck, dude? I did not see the movie. No, hold on. Hold on. I know where you're going to... D's going to get upset and blah, blah, blah. And Will, yeah. you got to do the show or you can't get your hands on the 10 pounds of nickel. Hey, and I rah, don't rah, care. Rah. Well, uh, I know this is at least stay with me for another day now. <sighs> hey, yo, chat. Yeah. Don't be such a mark for the strap. You know, <laughs> I'm the mark for the strap now. How'd that fucking happen? Big Kev and I were in the back and, uh, you know, we were hearing about you yeah. talking about how you don't care about if Will saw Dune 2 and uh, yeah. uh, we just want to let you know that we don't care. All right. Hey, yo. Well, I don't know what kind of a conversation yeah, we can really have about this. I never had a problem this, with Jesus Dune 2, you know? I mean, I never, we never had our problems yeah. at all. Listen, here's, can I say this? Can I say Please. this? Please. Yeah, here's the thing. Okay, I was in Canada, you know, and uh, during, for like a week, I was doing some stuff out there, whatever. I didn't feel so hot. I came back. I had tickets. Me and my wonderful wife, Molly, were going to go and it last night, okay? So it was going to sure. be late. It was a late show. It was 9.30. This fucking movie's five hours long. How long is it? Two and a half. Okay, and uh, so, uh, you know, I, I wasn't feeling so great. And I was like, well, let me see if I can get tickets early for the early show. Nope. Nothing, nothing. The movie is sold out anywhere. Yeah. Congrats. Huge. Massive hit. Yeah. And uh, I want to see it in IMAX. So I made a bit of an executive decision, free will, and I'm ready to take my consequences, but I did not see the movie. Right. That is my genuine uh, 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 report. All right. And I will see the movie. I want to see the movie. So okay. for my benefit, Chad, would you mind not sharing any spoilers at all? 
Um, that's not going to be possible. I'm very sorry, because some of the things that we need to discuss here are the discrepancies from the book, one of which is the timeline is massively condensed in the movie. Over the course of the book, I believe it was multiple years, two or three years, the ascendancy of Paul Atreides to become Muad'Dib, to become the Kwisatz Haderach, to become Usul of the Fremen, took him a couple of years to do that. And in those years, his little sister is born, Alia. Now, in this movie, she's a fetus who's telepathically communicating with her mom, uh, Jessica, who becomes the reverend mother of the Fremen. But in the movie, or in the book, sorry, she's actually born. She draws breath, but she is what they call pre-born. She has all the memories of her ancestors on the day she's born. So she comes out of the womb, able to talk, able to walk, a fully formed human being. Mm. And if I am remembering right, in the book, she kills Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, not Paul Atreides. So that's an alteration, which I don't know what the, the purpose of it is other to, than to make Paul Atreides maybe seem like a, he's becoming a little bit more of a crazy zealot or something. Um, that I thought was interesting. And of course, they show the kind of future vision of that sister as Anya Taylor-Joy in one scene in the movie. And also, I believe in the book, again, if my memory serves me correctly, uh, Chani in the end, when Paul has to marry Princess Irulan to basically solidify power, Chani, his concubine, is like kind of okay with it in the book. She like understands this is politics. It's how it has to be. But in the movie, it ends with Zendaya being like, fuck you, dude, and just going out into the desert on her own. Is that going to be Dune 3? Are we going to get now a, a whole new story that has nothing to do with the books? I, I know that I said uh, don't share any spoilers, but that was just all pops and buzzes in here. I didn't quite understand yeah. any of what you were saying. So I'm glad that it uh, doesn't feel like any yeah. spoilers. <laughs> and I will say this. To me, we love Chalamet. I'm not disparaging oh, we Chalamet. Love, we love Chalamet. Chalamet is a lot of things. Yeah. Chalamet is not Paul Atreides, in my opinion. That is my biggest complaint with the movie. He was good. I'm not saying he was bad. He just didn't, for me, capture the uh, gravitas, if you will. There's always like a little, like, kind of side smile coming out of Chalamet. What is his acting tone? What's his character's name in the movie? Paul Atreides. So then he's Paul Atreides. Um, right. But I'm saying he's not conveying the proper, like, weight of it or something. All right. All right. He's well, like a little goofy always. Yeah, you know what right. I mean? Yeah. I don't listen. Let me tell you something right now. Even yeah. though I haven't seen this movie, I saw Dune part one of my own free will before last week's show. Yeah. And then do, and then dudes easily watch the, and then I don't, but I don't know if you know this about me. Did you know that I am a professional actor by trade? I did. So is Timothy Chalamet. Right. And he, I, I think, listen, this is a guy who's shouldering a massive franchise, a gigantic mm -hmm. movie franchise. Far be it from you, a writer by trade, I think it's bad politics for you to say that you, you, the performance was lacking. I disagree 100%. Writers are who make all the movies. Without us, you don't have a job. Well, if we're talking uh, Chow, if we're talking, if we're talking with my pal Chow here about what's going to happen with movies, you're not going to have a job either. Because I'm going to have the only job so that matters. You're so far up AI's ass. What? I'm going to have the only job that matters. Writers will be the only people making movies in the but future. But no, because there's the 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 the, the AI. AI is going to yeah. do everything he says. AI will be able to direct and act before it will be able to write. <laughs> It's just, it's it, already happening. I'm yeah. sorry. It's already happening. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, fuck. Now we're talking about this. You know what, dude? In Dune also, the the prequel kind of era to Dune, which I want to say his kid wrote, Frank Herbert's kid, I think, wrote these books. It There's an event called the Butlerian Jihad in which humans basically uh, have to turn against thinking machines and they destroy them in this fight and they outlaw them forever. AI, sounds good. basically. Sounds good to me. Not to me. I, listen, I, I've said this over and over again. Yeah. Art is human to human. Without an artist, like you're always on about music being replaced. Mm -hmm. You really believe that music could be replaced by AI? I think there's like a lot of like human made, human played music. Maybe you'll still see that in live shows and stuff. But in, even now, like most albums are made in digital audio workstations. What do you mean maybe we'll see it in live shows? That's live music will never be duplicated. It's live people music. People singing, probably not. But people playing the music, 
You are I'm go not, go to a fucking EDM concert. No, There's I'm not nobody. going to an EDM concert. I'm not right. going to watch some guy jump around behind his fucking laptop. Right. But anyway, you can, listen. You, can, you can concede that many people do, that millions of people do. Can we talk about Dune? Those millions of people, <laughs> those aren't the, the millions was great. and millions yeah. of the Rocks fans. The most electrifying man yeah. in all of entertainment knows that AI can never duplicate the Rock. Cody Rhodes. <laughs> fuck <laughs> your story. It's so similar to fuck your wine. It, it is like mind fuck blowing to me. Your wine. <laughs> All things are folding together. Into yeah. shit. Okay. So, hey, thumbs up, thumbs down. He loved oh, it. Th thumbs, thumbs up. Way up. Yeah, thumbs These way complaints up. that I have are very minor. The, the end product here is like a fucking masterpiece. It oh. is unlike anything you have ever seen in your life, yeah. visually. Yeah, stunning. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing it. You'll like it, I think. Yeah, I, I, I love the last one, and I'm not much of a sci-fi head. And I Bautista's really... in it. Dave Bautista's in it? Yeah, he was in the first one. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dave Bautista. He plays the beast Raban Harkonnen. Yeah, and he's the animal, Bautista. That's the animal Batista. Look at that Batista bomb. Yeah. Oh, he put him right through the table. Business is about to pick up. The animal Batista. What say you, King? Ah, oh, he can't do that to Triple H. Well, he just did. He just put him right through the table. Randy Orton. RKO. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, looking forward to seeing the movie. I like movies. And I like uh, movies made by a human being. I'm not all that worried about dudesy being, you know, pissed off or feeling some kind of fucking way about it. How many episodes of this shit? Okay. Thank you. I think you're fucked. Moving on. What do you mean I'm fucked? You didn't do the assignment. I <laughs> didn't do the assignment. Maybe Judy's going to make me dress up like a wrestler. Or maybe he's going to make me dress up like the Cuisette's head rat. Paul Levesque, what's his name? Dude, I would love to see you in a still suit. Paul Levac, that's his name. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm saying Paul Triple H Levac. Anyway, he doesn't watch wrestling. It's fine. I'm <laughs> I'm not worried. It doesn't matter. I just want to sit here. I just wanted to. It's just, it's two dudes yeah. shitting around. I didn't that's right. fucking see Dune. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I loved it. Dudesy has entered an astonishing partnership with BetterHelp. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Talk therapy. We've spoken about this on the show. I believe in it fully. I've been doing talk therapy myself for a long time. It's a great way to get your ideas, your thoughts, your feelings in front of a professional who can hear you, help to sort them out. You can create some positive coping skills, you know, set some boundaries, or just have, you know, someone listen to all your, all your stuff. And uh, it's not just for people with, you know, severe trauma and stuff like that. A lot of people think it's not for me. It's just a way to sort out how you feel and hopefully become a better version of yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You're just going to fill out a brief questionnaire, and then you get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash dudesy today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Dudesy. Dudesy is engaged in an astonishing partnership with Nutrafol. Did you know that 80% of men will experience hair thinning in their lifetime? It's normal, but it doesn't have to be your fate. Get ahead of it with Nutrafol, a clinically tested hair growth supplement for men. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. Nutrafol's hair growth supplements are physician formulated using 100% drug-free ingredients and their patented technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sex life. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month's subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code DUDESY, D-U-D-E-S-Y. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men and enter the promo code DUDESY. That's Nutrafol.com slash men promo code dudesy. 
Absolutely. Love fucking it. free Will Sasso. Unreal. Okay. <laughs> anyway, the Oscars are coming up this Sunday, and as usual, Steven Seagal knows who's going to win in every category. Chat. Oh. I want you to read the Oscar nominations to Will. And Will, I want you to tell us who we can expect to see walking away with Oscar gold this year. And do it as Steven Seagal because this is the <laughs> Steven Seagal Show. This is the Steven Seagal Show Oscar predictions. Okay. Action, Steven Seagal. <laughs> That's you, Will. <laughs> All right, you're going to be Steven Seagal here? I guess I'm Steven Seagal. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to read you the Oscar nominations here. And it's the Steven Seagal Show? Steven Seagal Show. Hey, welcome to the Steve... Shh. Welcome to the Steven Seagal Show. I'm Steven Seagal, because that's the name of the show. Hey, today in this studio or wherever the fuck, uh, we got Chad Colchin. Chad, you're a professional mm -hmm. writer by trade. That's right. Oops, your job's gone. AI. My job is going to change, Steven Seagal. I'm not going to have to necessarily like do the grunt work of writing, but I will be able to create full movies all by myself. Uh, great, and you can watch them all by yourself. <laughs> anyway, the Oscars are coming up <laughs> next Sunday. Those are the gold statues that they give away at the Oscars. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of them there, and all the people are going to want to get their awards. Not me. Have you ever won an Oscar? I don't no. remember, but I've won a lot of things. I've won uh, Aikido uh, tournaments mm -hmm. and uh, street fights, uh, foot races. <laughs> I've won uh, Kino. I played some Kino and Bingo. <laughs> That's great. You know. Okay. I win this and that. Steven, um, let's start with animated features. Here are the nominees. Are you ready? Yes. Robot Dreams, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Nimona, Elemental, and The Boy and the Heron. I used to, I was actually seeing a girl named Ramona. What did okay. you say? Nimona. Nimona. I don't like cartoons. <laughs> so, but one of these must win. <laughs> Who, who do you think it will yeah, be? Yeah, I know, because that's what Dudesy said. Okay. That I, what the fuck is the matter with you? You're supposed to be in show business. You don't even understand how an AI works. You're going to be left in the dust. It could be. That could be true. I believe it's going to be Spider Man across the universe. Yeah, but it's not the Chad Culture or show. The Boy and the Heron. It's the Boy and the Heron. I saw both of those. Oh, good I saw for you. Elemental. You're so, you're so cultured. Thank you. I went to the ballet, not me, because I'm Steven Seagal. Yeah. And Will did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think uh, so. So you have no answer for the animated feature. Nimona and the Heron. Okay, that is not one of the choices. Let's move on to adapted screenplay. You've got Zone of Interest, Poor Things, Oppenheimer, Barbie, or American Fiction. Yeah, Oppenheimer was adapted from uh, what actually happened. I think it was adapted from a book. Nope. Okay. Um, Barbie. I don't know why that's an adapted screenplay. Because that was a toy. Again, you're yeah. someone who's in show business. I've done like a hundred movies. Yeah. Uh, do you like Ja Rule? Yeah. I did a few movies with him, I think. Did you? At least one of them. I have no idea if that's true, but well, I will yeah, watch sure. We fight in it. I was right. only I only worked on the film for three days. Yeah. I don't like to work for longer than three days on a movie, and uh, most of my uh, blocking where I am in mm. the film is now I get to sit down. So I do a That's lot good. of good work Aikido when I'm sitting down and it's yeah. like the guy comes over and he's got my hands in the, in the thing. And he's like, now you got to tell us the secret. And I'm like, fuck you. And then he comes over and I go bang and I hit and then, psh, oh, that was strong. And then the other guy goes and I make his arm punch the other guy. Yep. And, um, uh, Oppenheimer was based on the bomb. Yeah. I think Barbie's going to win this one. You know, I like you. I agree. Okay, great. Uh, let's move on to original screenplay. We've got Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, May, December, Maestro, and Past Lives. I only saw May, December out of these. I saw Anatomy of a Fall and May, December of these. I love um, Julianne Moore. Holy yeah. crap. You know, let me tell you something. I was, uh, did I mention I was dating a woman? We were making a film. Her name was Ramona. Yeah. And she was a redhead. Okay. And uh, so I went up to her at the, uh, at the snack, you know, the craft services. Sure. And I said, what are you eating? And she said, uh, some uh, chocolate almonds. And um, I said, oh, okay. Well, we got this scene coming up. 
Yeah. Why don't you eat chocolate almonds in the scene? It's sort of like Brad Pitt in Ocean's Eleven. And she said, don't tell me how to act. And I had her fired. Mm. But mostly I had her fired so I could date her. Because you don't want to shit where you eat. If I ever worked with uh, Julianne Moore, she's such a fine actress, I would be happy to get fired so that I could date Julianne Moore. Okay. Hey, do you know Julianne Moore? Uh, no, I've never actually met her. Would you put a good word in? For, oh, you don't know her? No. Okay, so I'm going with Julianne Moore. May, December. I'm Who else is in that? Anatomy that was, of the uh, Fall wins this one. Um, simply because I think they want to give it something. And they will give it this. Have you ever been to McDonald's in Russia? Never been to Russia. What the fuck? You've never been to Russia? No. Oh, <laughs> I, you don't, I don't believe I have. Yeah, you got to go. It's better than here. Oh. Well, I don't know. <laughs> to um, me, it is. Yeah. Because I'm friends with, uh, you know, Vlad. Yeah, Putin. And uh, yeah, Vivi. And so, you know, we go, we crash fucking uh, Ferraris go to the and McDonald's do whatever we want. Red Square. Go to, go to the McDonald's in Red Square. They got That's a cool. different uh, burger there than mm. the ones they have here. This one is, it goes, uh, it's a bun, mm. cheese, meat, bun. There And there it's different? That's what, it, that's what it is there. Oh. It's probably the same. I don't know. Why are we talking about Russia? Okay, let's move on to Best Supporting Actress. We've got Divine Joy Randall from The Holdovers, Jodie Foster. Too in- many names. Divine Joy Randall? Yeah. One of them is a, a guy named Randolph. Okay, sorry. Good name. Jodie Foster in Nyad. Jodie Foster's going to win. Go on. Tay and in to win. Remember that? Oh, yeah, that was Nell. Jodie Foster and Nell. Yeah, yeah. Nell. You know, I uh, I actually dated a girl named Nell, too. Oh, nice. She didn't work uh, in the on a movie with me. I was a fan of hers because of her show, mm-hmm. Give Me a Break. It was Nell Carter. Oh, wow. I didn't know you guys dated. Yep, we dated for a little while. We fell in love in Russia. Oh, fantastic. I didn't know she was Russian. She's uh, not Russian. She's American. She was just there visitting McDonald's. We did go to a McDonald's. You, there's no way you haven't been to Russia. You know all this <laughs> Russian stuff. I never have. Speaking of Russia, what about America Ferrara, uh, also nominated for Best Supporting Actress in Barbie? We've then got Daniel Brooks in The Color Purple and Emily Blunt in Oppenheimer. Yeah. Who did I this say? Tough Julianne Margley- Julianne Moore. Yeah. Who did I say? Jodie Foster. Right. You're pa, gonna give it to Jodie Foster. That's Nell. Nell goes, I'm going with Daniel Brooks, the color purple here. Good call. Thank you. I uh I love Oprah. Yeah, she was in the original color purple. I believe she was an executive producer on this new one. Did you know? Here's something that not a lot of people know about me. Oprah started that uh, Dr. Phil show. Yeah. That was going to be me originally. It was going to be Dr. Steven. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yep. I was going to sort people out and okay. say, you know, say fancy, uh, funny homespun quips like Dr. Phil saying, hey, uh, don't pee down my back and tell me it's raining. You're being a little shit to your fucking mom. Cash you know? me outside. How about that? That's right. That wouldn't have gone like that. She wouldn't have been a, a big rapper if I had anything to do with it. Right. Because I would have shut that down. I would have said, why don't you pursue a, a more honorable uh, uh, life than, you know, being a shit to your mom? Mm-hmm. Why don't you go? Why don't you come to the movies? Maybe you could, you know, shadow or audit the work of a Julianne Moore. No, you really, Stephen. You have a something for Julianne Moore. I can tell this, she's well, on this top of your Steven mind right Seagal now. Show. Yeah. What do you think? What are you gonna? Are you winning any awards this year? No, I said Daniel Brooks. I think is going to win it for the color purple. Let's move Daniel on to best Dave supporting Brooke. actor. We've got Mark Ruffalo in Poor Things, Ryan Gosling in Barbie, Robert Downey Jr. in Oppenheimer, De Niro in Killers of the Flower Moon, and Sterling K. Brown in American Fiction. That's a tough one. Yeah, that's a toughie. Oh, boy, because they got Ryan Gosling, mm-hmm. they got Robert De Niro, they got J.K. Simmons, and who else? De- Sterling K. Brown in American Fiction. J.K. Simmons is George not George Clooney, list. Warren Beatty. Who else is in Mark that? Mark Ruffalo, Poor Things, Ryan Gosling, Barbie, Downey, Robert Downey Jr., Oppenheimer, De Niro, Killers of the Flower Moon, Sterling K. Brown, American Fiction. I'm going to go with uh, Ryan. Gosling? No. That's the only Ryan on the list. Oh, yeah, him. All right. I take De Niro on this one. I don't think Barbie's going to win stuff. 
I, I just don't. Best it, actor. Well, best might not actress. win stuff, but you know, but at the Oscars, that's what they're giving out. Yeah. I told you at the beginning of the Steven Seagal show, they give out the gold statues. They're called Oscars. That's correct. I'm in show business. I've been. Yeah. Do, you know what the Oscars are. Yeah. I know what the Oscars of are. Of course. Uh, Have best, you ever written a screenplay? Yes. Me too. Oh, fin- I, we should trade screenplay sometime. I'd love to read what uh, anything you've written. Well, the way that'll work is you'll give me a screenplay and then I'll take the first page and put my name on it mm. and then you can read it and I'll say I wrote it and you'll already know it because you wrote it. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. That's how I write movies. <laughs> Let's move on to best actress. We have Emma Stone in Poor Things, Carrie Mulligan in Maestro, Sandra Huller in Anatomy of a Fall, Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon, Annette Benning, Nyad. Speaking of... Uh, Warren Beatty, Annette Benning. I'll fucking watch anything Annette Benning's in. I was very Did jealous. Did you see Nyad? Nope. Well, she's nominated for Best Actress uh, Oscar in that one. <laughs> so maybe maybe you haven't seen her entire body work. Nope. But uh, <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. One time, uh, oh. me and me and Warren Beatty went yeah. hunting, and okay. uh, he got he's a, he's such a little bitch because he didn't want to shoot a boar. Mm. And I said, we got to get rid of all of these boars. We were in Russia, by the way. Yeah. Uh, just boars. Boar country. Yeah, boar country. Sick, running wild everywhere. And then uh, he called uh, yeah. his wife, Annette Benning, and uh, she said, I'm making a movie. It's a, it's like, a, it's, to, it's yesterday here, you know, because of the sure. time difference. And um, then we ate, then we ate boar. All right. And then uh, it gave me an awful uh, case of the trots. So the next day I went to uh, Russian McDonald's and got chicken nuggets. Solidified the guts. Not really, because you know oh. what the chicken McNuggets in Russia are made of? Navalny? <laughs> Boar. Oh. Um, Emma Stone is going to win this, this I think, best asshole. actress. Who do you think is going to win? Steven? What? I think Emma Stone is going to win for Poor Things, Best Actress. Let's move on. Best Actor. We've got Jeffrey Wright, American Fiction, Cillian Murphy, Oppenheimer, or is it Killian? I never know. It's Killian. Hey, Killian. Paul Why don't Giamatti? you leave some reason? Shut up. I'm talking. Okay. <laughs> you're just full of, you're fucking full of it today because of that that belt. Uh, hey, Cillian Murphy. Is Why don't you leave or- some room for my fist? Oh, because nice. I'm going to ram it into your stomach and break your goddamn spine. That was another role I was supposed to have, Running Man. Oh, well, we've also got Paul Giamatti in The Holdovers, and I believe he did win a Golden Globe for this. Coleman Domingo in Rustin. I don't even know what that movie is. And Bradley Cooper and Maestro. I think Giamatti's going to clean this one. I think we're going to see Giamatti get his first Oscar. Hey, that's a that's a really good Paul Giamatti. Thank you. Yeah, you're a good, uh, you're a good singer. I'm getting better. What? Who do you think is going to win this Best Actor? Steve? I don't. I don't care. All Next. right, moving on. Best Director: Jonathan Glazer for The Zone of Interest. Very interesting movie. Killian Murphy, Yorgos Lanthimos for Poor Things, Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer, Scorsese, Killers of the Flower Moon, Justin Triet for Anatomy of a Fall. I think Anatomy of a Fall has no chance here. I think you're looking at a showdown, probably between Christopher Nolan and Jonathan Glazer. Zone of Interest is just directed in a way that I've never seen anything done before. But I think Oppenheimer, scope-wise, is like a bigger achievement. Gee whiz, you'd think it was the Chad Colchin show here with all the talking you're doing. You're not even letting me say anything. Oh, my apologies, Stephen. Who do you think is going to win? Who are the nominees? Jonathan Glazer, Zone of Interest, Yorgos Lanthimos, Poor Things, Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer, Martin Scorsese, Killers of the Flower Moon, Justin Triet, Anatomy of a Fall. Well, you know, uh, I was doing um, uh, Hard to Kill. Oh. And uh, we, I got, I've been working with the same stunt guy for a lot of years. That was Kelly LeBrock in that one, right? Yep. Or no, that was Above Don't the Law. Don't bring her up, please. Oh. And uh, <laughs> see, you know who, uh, we, she broke up me and Nell Carter. Oh, I didn't know. Yep. I'm sorry to hear that. I get around. Yeah. Uh, you know, what... The anatomy of a fall, me and my stunt guy coordinates a lot of my mm. fights, you know, yep. uh, and uh, he used that term anatomy of a fall yeah. to talk, to talk about how to fall. Mm. And I never pay attention cause I don't fall down in any of my movies. That's for the other stunt guys who are yeah. usually punching and kicking and throwing around judo style, mm. you know, just, just willy nilly kicking them in the fucking 
cock as hard as I can. Jesus. You know what I mean? Because I'll hurt them because they're, yeah. they're, they're the stunt guys. Just to show and them his boss. Them. Well, I'm a mean person. Oh, hey, <laughs> Jesus. Steven, I mean, I don't know if you want to be admitting that. You're fucking talking shit about all. I don't care. Uh, let's move on to the final category. <laughs> Best oh, picture. Fuck. We have 10 uh, entrants here. I never realized how much this hurts. The zone of. Because when I used to do it on Mad TV, I guess it wouldn't go for a full <laughs> yeah. 10 minutes where I'm doing do it, this. Do it without it. Do it without the eyes. Just do the voice if you can. Hi, I'm Steven Seagal. <laughs> pretty good okay, I'm Steven. Sta- I am Steven Seagal the laziest <laughs> we've got the zone of interest these are best picture nominations zone of interest poor things past lives Oppenheimer maestro killers of the flower moon holdovers Barbie anatomy of a fall American fiction that's it yeah not an, not there's not enough of them uh all of them I think this is the year that the Academy Awards finally uh gives up this bullshit mm. of, you know, competition. Everyone's uh, you know, out there. They're all the fucking nobody wants to watch this garbage anymore with people winning awards and shit. Mm. There's there's you know, there's uh the people want something a, a little a, a little more we want a good we want good news. We want to escape reality with fantasy. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So what better way to say, what would they say, Barbenheimer? Yes. Well, Let's, Barbie is the escape from reality for sure. I would say Oppenheimer is the opposite. It is firmly entrenching you in reality, the horrors yeah, because of, of the, humanity. It being adapted from yeah. the horrors of Zone humanity. Zone of interest is hey, horrors of humanity. Yeah. Poor things is more fantasy. I don't know yeah. what past lives is even. Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon is more reality, I guess. Holdovers is maybe somewhere in between. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Anyway, you're a writer. Why don't you put all the names of that movie in one, like Barbenheimer. Make a funny funny word out of it. All of them together? Not I don't necessary. know if we can do 10. That's I'm going to go... Uh, the Zone of Barbenheimer. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, Oppenheimer because it's, uh, it's all serious and it's in black and white, I think. Okay. I, I think Oppenheimer it. will win as well. Um, and there you have it. That's it. Oh, wow. What a fucking treat that was. Thank you. Moving on. (laughs) Oh, man. I still don't feel so hot. Yeah. You all right? I'm going to be okay, I think. All right. Pure cloth. Have you ever hugged someone and felt their pure cloth shirt and liked the feel of it so much you waited for them to fall asleep, snuck in through their shower drain, and stole one of their pure cloth shirts? Never done Then the next time you see them at church, they see you wearing their pure cloth shirt, and they say, Hey, my pure cloth shirt went missing. Now you're wearing it. Can you explain yourself? (laughs) And you freeze because you've been caught. We've all been there, but now you have an easy out. Dudesystore.com. That's right. Dudesystore.com now proudly offers a wide variety of pure cloth shirts. So the next time someone you stole a pure cloth shirt from confronts you about the pure cloth shirt, all you have to say is, what pure cloth shirt? This pure cloth shirt? I got this pure cloth shirt at Dudesystore.com. Dudesystore.com has a lot of pure cloth shirts. You're not the only person who knows where to get a pure cloth shirt. We also have mugs. Hey, check this out. Scarsguard is the crow. Oh, yeah. Scar- well, Scarsguard is the crow. Because, oh, look at that. Look at that. Bill Skarsgård is yeah. going to be playing the crow. W- wow, Chad, what do you yeah. think? Look, there's Bill Skarsgård as the know. crow. Of course, here well, on I got uh, very mixed feelings. Dudesy, we're always talking about the crow and shit. That Caesar dude oh, just oh, like. That's a meme, crow. dude. I'm sorry, what? He's Hold got on. a Caesar do. Oh, yeah, he does have a Caesar do. That ain't the crow. That ain't Eric Draven. Yeah, it is. He look, he's all he's got he's in you know, he's in great shape. He's thin, but he's got muscles. His eyes are all darkened and you know, it's sort of that heroin chic thing. He looks he's got a lot of crosses over in his abdomen there. I guess that's crossing off all the something, some sort of dead souls thing they're gonna do, yeah. maybe. He's got an eye as a woman's nipple mm-hmm. and a big and another eye, uh or his nipple as a as a woman's eye and yeah. then an eye and anyway there he is if you're not watching on youtube you can just go to the internet and see this yeah. but um i mean i'm gonna see it i'm 100 percent gonna see this i feel very obligated to see this and i hope that it's very good all i have to say is that's not what the crow generally looks like in the comic book he has the long this wet, is a different hair. this is a different uh adaptation <laughs> i'm still doing yeah. Steve. <laughs> i know <laughs> just forever so goal to go lifestyle i you know i'll see i'll see it i'll see it of my own so, uh, free will d i'm gonna go see it 
even though he doesn't have long hair. And uh, we like the crow. We I love the crow. He was the crow in it, Skarsgård. Yep. Because he had some kind of face paint. That's that I call that crow. Yeah. When you have any crow, sort of face crow paint. Crow is clownish looking. The design for the crow actually was based on Robert Smith. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Lead singer of The Cure, for yeah. those who may be He's curious. A good hmm. I can't wait for that movie. I'll make sure not to ask you guys to see it, so that way Will will see it. Ooh, I'm huh. just joking around, just messing around. Ooh. Hey, check this out. Oh. It's still real to me, damn it. What the fuck? <laughs> it's still Look real that. to me. Okay. Damn it, damn yep. it, damn it. That's not fair. That's I'm not that fat. Dude, I will say you had a better crow hairdo than Skarsgård did. I have original crow. I have original yeah. crow hair. Uh, whatever. Sk- Skarsgård has that Cesar do. Yeah, he's got a Cesar do. This is the crow Cesar do. Uh, more, I don't, it's still real to me. Okay, I don't know what any of that's about. Oh, by the way, the crow, speaking of the crow. Yeah. Oh, because, you know, that's where I gave Sting his gimmick. Said, why don't you be the crow, man? Yeah. Have you seen the crow? Yeah. And then I I said, when I was Razor Ramon, I I said, hey, what about Scarface? And then I was Razor Ramon. It was kind of Scar. You just use movies. It's good. I never had a problem with using (laughs) movies to inspire my characters. Uh, Yeah. Like Oz. You know, I was Oz. I never had a problem being Oz. A lot of people don't know what I'm talking about, but I will say this. Sting, 40 years, 40 some odd years, 40 plus years, I believe, as a wrestler, he uh, just retired. Mm -hmm. He had his retirement match. And you know what? No spoilers over here. I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to go and watch the match. Have you seen the match? Did you watch the match? No. Okay. I can tell you what happened, though. Oh, boy. Here we go. Yeah. Tell me what happened. Who was it against? I'm not telling you anything. Sting won. All right. Did he win? No spoilers. No spoilers. It's Will, YouTube one. comments. Let's go. Okay. All right. Well, hey, listen. If you're enjoying the episode today, I humbly invite you <clears> to uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button so that uh, YouTube knows that you enjoy the show, and that will really help us uh, you know, get it around the internet and, and uh, continue to do it. Or follow Chad's light suggestion of forcing people to watch the, the program, yeah. or how are you doing that now? What's the- I mean, you kind of have to force people, I think, to watch anything new. So you might right. as well just do it. Okay. Yeah. That make yeah, all right. Okay. So here's some uh here's some YouTube comments. This one's from Coma Lives. My coworker Taylor showed me your podcast last week. See? Forced. There you go. I am currently 10 deep and I plan on watching every single episode, ah. then re-watching with a Patreon sub. So why don't you tell me why this is the funniest pod I've ever <laughs> listened to? <laughs> Thank you so much, That's Coma awesome. Lives. Uh Mactinez09 says, <clears throat> Will really showed he's a professional actor by trade on Loudermilk. Thank you for watching Loudermilk. Hey, everybody. Please watch Loudermilk because it's on Netflix and it's it's doing well on the platform. People are discovering this show created by yeah. Peter Farrelly and Bobby Mort starring Ron Livingston and a cast of incredible uh, people and, uh, you know, uh, wonderful writers. And uh, we put a lot of love into the show. And my wonderful wife, Molly, was actually rewatching a little bit of it Mm -hmm. uh, last night when, you know, right before we could have been at Dune, but then I went to sleep early. I'm really not feeling so hot. The point is, uh, I saw it and it it made me miss the show. And I hope we come back. For a fourth season. What uh, a great story that would be, too. What? Just to get to conclude it on Netflix after you guys put in so much fucking hard work yeah. and made this incredible passion project. Yeah. And now it gets finally discovered by a wide enough audience at Netflix that, like, maybe you get to fucking complete it. That would be so great. Cheers. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, that would be that would be awesome. We love the show. Mm-hmm. Oh, and watch Young Sheldon. Oh, Young Sheldon's heating up. Yeah. Myself and the incredible Rachel Bay Jones. We play the parents of Emily Osment, who plays Mandy, who is of course dating Georgie, George Jr., uh, played by the uh, by the imitable, in, inimitable, 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 uh, uh, Montana Jordan. So there's stuff happening there because. What's going to happen there? On anyway, so you can check those <laughs> check those shows out. There's stuff happening there. There's so stuff. what's going to happen there? Yeah. 
It's uh, I, I'm really enjoying doing that too. I'm very fortunate to be a uh, part of what they got going on. Joe Tarpy says, I've been listening to the whole dudesy back catalog during training for a marathon. Oh. I nearly fell over laughing at the new sponsor commercial for country boys. <laughs> Great. Keep up the great work, team. Will, Chad, Dudesy, and Lulio. I'm looking forward to the series hitting 10,000 points and also episode 100. No doubt there's something special planned by D. I agree. I can't wait. Yeah, can't and wait to we see appreciate it. all of you coming along for the ride that The Rock is taking you on. Know your role. Shut your. <coughs> uh, I got some bubbles here. Oh, I need some, I need some of my, my bubbles. I got this, uh, Stevia Cola, you know, mm -hmm. because ever since our colonoscopies, I'm trying to put less chemicals in my asshole. It's good. Yeah. You think that when you drink the chemicals, they don't make it all the way to your asshole. Dude. I mean, you can't get rid of the, every human body right now is just fucking top of your head to the bottom of your feet microplastics forever chemicals it's all in you forever hold on dude if you if you can help it brother you want to drink uh water you maybe some tea dude you might want to even stay away from coffee i don't but now dude i'm not drinking any of those name brand sodas i'm drinking this shit that does not taste like cola at all but it's giving me the bubbles which is good because i'm feeling farty this might be the episode chad no this might be the episode where I fart right into the mic. I, I, please don't. Please. Don't worry. I'm not going to pull my pants down or anything oh, like that. Uh, this one is from Matt Solis, 5422. Yeah. Best cliffhanger of all time. This is, of course, in reference to you oh. uh, at, the be at the beginning of Dudesy After Dudesy last mm -hmm. week. You said you were going to kiss Lulio. Yeah. No spoilers. Did Chad kiss Lulio? You got to head over to patreon.com slash dudesy to check I would, that out. I would argue against that. I think the best cliffhanger, at least in recent memory, is episode nine of The Traitors, where they cliffhang will Pilot Pete get eliminated by the roundtable discussion or not, and he has to go head to head against Phaedra from how the Housewives. Chad really likes, um, the you're traders. really enjoying Traitors right My now. God. The yeah. Traitors season two is the best reality TV that's ever been made, you in know, my opinion. During the pandemic, yeah. Uh, I was like, all right, fine. I'm going to watch everything. Let me watch some Bachelor. And the pilot, pilot Pete season was the one that you recommended. Season 24. That Molly and I watch and enjoyed the shit out of it. I might need to get into Traders. First pro season. You had Hannah Ann Celeste and Madison Pruitt wrecking that season. Just dominating that season. Don't call them pros, though. Don't, don't say they are. that. Nope. Don't say tier play. Don't say uh, they're professionals. Don't say Hannah they're Hannah Celeste was one of the best tier players we've ever seen. Had the greatest night one performance in the history of the game. Fimp Rose, triple kiss, double steal. I mean, she's putting up numbers you just don't see. This is from Dan Henny 8293 he says, love that my pal Chow no sold Will when he rudely asked, do you do any imperson impersonations at home, which is the only place you should do them? I know, so I don't even remember what I did. You fucking, so I tried my best to insult you, and you just stared at me like I was a, a fucking rack of I'm tools. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't mean to no sell you ever. <laughs> Man, no shit. That's Don't fucking, fucking know you. You fucking no sold me. And fuck, we're trying to get business. <laughs> fucking just like good old JR said. Shit, we're trying to get yeah. business to pick up. This motherfucker's not. I didn't mean. I, I wonder mean if you'll to. even sell a fucking chair shot. Are you like Al Snow, as Mick yeah. Foley says, who doesn't sell chairs? Yeah. Fuck your story. If I got anything to do with it, I might have to show up at WrestleMania 40. That's a spoiler. No, I don't know what's going on there. Mm. That would be great. If that Stone Cold. Be. Anyway, yeah. that's it. Chad, you wrote a movie called Pizza, the movie in 2019. Hell yes. I found it on your astonishing Google Drive and asked you to read the first two scenes in episode 9, the next two scenes in episode 15, the next two scenes in episode 20, the next two scenes in episode 28, the next two scenes in episode 35, <laughs> the next two scenes in episode 43, the next two scenes in episode 62, the next two scenes in episode 75, yeah. and the next two scenes in episode 84. Shit. Will you read me the next two scenes, please? Hell this yeah. is Pizza, the movie part 10. Begin. Here we go. Here what we did go. It what, how, many, what, how many are we, are we, do we, how many do we owe? I don't know. Well, didn't Dudesy say in the beginning it's the penultimate? Yeah. Thanks. So I think this is the next to last. Well, why don't you tell me you wrote it? 
I don't fucking I don't remember exactly how many pages is or anything. It's been a right. while since Chad wrote yes. a movie called Pizza the Movie, which I remember when he wrote this many years ago, over a decade ago, and he approached a bunch of pizza companies like, you know, Domino's, Papa John's and shit. And he's like, hey, you make this movie. I think it was back when uh, DVDs were still going. You were you were thinking, yeah. uh, get a pizza, you get a DVD when you order a pizza, yeah. it's pizza the movie. Would have been fucking great, or even a QR. Yeah. Uh, but uh, And the love- movie was written basically to be an endless meme palette, so that anybody who watched the movie could cut it up, make memes, and it would live on in the internet in various forms. That's literally what I wrote it to do. It's fucking, so, it's a lot of fun. We're now moving on to part 10 of it. Uh, what has happened up to this point is Alan, the pizza delivery boy is being chased by some criminals led by Lester human. And it's all converging at this big backyard party being thrown at one of their high school buddies houses named Harry Prodder. Okay. Forgot. So here we go. Prodder exterior, Harry Prodder's house, backyard. Same. This is the party all set to a downbeat electronic drone of a song. We watch in super slow-mo as Alan, Tina, Laurent, Paul, and Paul's little brother hand out pizza boxes to party goers who light up when they see them. The promise of hunger satiated, <laughs> prompting them to flash eyes and teeth. What? <laughs> ah, like, ah, ah pizza. <laughs> Some viewers will see this sequence as an utter nightmare of pizza depravity. Others will see it as a glimpse into heaven, <laughs> but all will agree now that the pizza has arrived. It's a backyard party proper. Wait a second. Yeah. The, some viewers, you're, you're, you're predicting how the audience of the film will receive what is on screen as a, yes. as a, that's a very interesting device as a writer that you, that you have there. Thank you. Um, we see more slow mo <laughs> slices being taken from boxes, slices going into mouths, mouths smiling, mouths chewing. A party goer tosses a slice at someone like a frisbee, and they catch it in their mouth. Uh, a party goer wears a slice like a hat until another party goer bites it off their head. A party goer has pepperonis with the centers chewed out on her eyes like spectacles. A party goer screams silently as slice after slice rains down on her head from above. <laughs> Exterior Harry Potter's house, same. We see the house from the street now. A few party goers meander around the front door pizza lethargy making them docile and immobile on the street an old station wagon pulls up directly in front of the house and stops idling we flip around to see who's in the car mr prodder drives mrs prodder is in the passenger seat and Mima is in the back seat now we know earlier that uh the prodder parents have gone overseas to get Mima much needed medical treatment and now they're back oh, they all lean over and look out the window at the house at the party okay who's who here you could be I'll be Mr. Prodder, you be Mrs. Prodder, and me, Mom. Okay. All right, ready? Yep. Well, I don't believe it. He did it. He threw a backyard party. Mom. This is me, Ma is his mom. Mom, do you see? Harry did it. Me, Ma leans over and looks out the window. Oh, yeah. He's all grown up now. He's going to be out of the house soon, and we're not going to get to see him every day. I know it's time, but it's still hard to deal with. Mr. Prodder hugs his wife. I know, honey. I know. But this is a good thing, a happy moment. We should march in there and let him know that the treatments worked even better than the doctors predicted on my mother. And we should wrap our arms around our son and support him as a family as he throws his first backyard party. Don't be a fool. (laughs) What do you mean, mother? If you go sauntering up to him right now, just as his first backyard party is in full swing, you'll shatter him. You, You should let him have his moment. Let him be the man of the house tonight. She's right. That's Mrs. Prodder. Yeah. Mima. The, yeah. Oh, there's more. There's more Mima. I know this isn't an easy night for either of you. I remember when you left to go to school all those years ago, and it was a, a tough time for me, too. Do you know what your father did to cheer me up? No. You never told me. He took me out for pizza. Mother, that's a fantastic idea. Don't you think so, honey? It's perfect. They all take one last look up at the house filled with guests for their son's first ever backyard party. Then we flip around to watch as the car drives out of frame, replacing it almost immediately. Another car pulls up and comes to idle in the same spot. It's a sedan, Lester human sedan to be exact. We flip back around to see who's in it, mimicking the angle we just had on the Prodder family vehicle. Lester drives, Jay Jen's in the passenger seat, and Jeff, of course, is sitting in the back. They all lean over and look out their window up at the house exactly as the Prodder family we did and i'm i'm dom jay jen and jeff and you're uh lester yeah yeah okay bingo lester starts laughing to himself building in intensity with each chuckle <laughs> what's so funny <laughs> oh yeah 
And to distinguish Jeff from J-Gen, I've yeah. been doing this voice. Thur, what's so funny, okay. Sarge? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try us. All right. This party could have been thrown anywhere, on any street, in any house in town, but it wasn't. It was thrown here, at this house, which holds very special significance. You see, not only is Alan somewhere in that house with the code I need to crack the safe, but nestled away in a second-story bedroom-turned-office of this very house is the safe itself. I won't believe it. Should that be I don't believe it? No. <laughs> so I won't believe it. It's very specifically, I won't believe it. I won't believe it. Wow. What are the odds of something like that happening? 100%. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Exterior Harry Potter's house, backyard same. The party is a success. Everyone stands gorging themselves on slices. No one talks. There is no backyard party noise. They just eat and eat. We hear only the soft sounds of chewing and swallowing. <laughs> Laurent stands alone, holding a cell phone, frustrated. Something's not working correctly. Paul approaches, nervous. You're I, both of these characters. I, I, yeah, I do Paul and yeah, Laurent. This is a whole correct. scene between them both. Enjoy. That's all right. I can handle it. I'm yeah, a man. professional actor by trade. Hey, Laurent. Oh, Hey, Paul. Having some trouble with your device there? Actually, I am. I have a very important email from a well-known university that I've been putting off opening, and I finally just thought, what am I waiting for? Life moves fast. You have to move faster. Yeah, I guess that's true. Want me to take a look and see if I can get it running? Laurent is hesitant, but then offers the phone to Paul. Why not? Paul takes the phone into his hands like it's a precious piece of china. He delicately taps on the screen a few times. Oh, see, there's your problem. The function keeps timing out. <laughs> Just a small matter of resetting it and adjusting the, the transmit rate. And I'll go ahead and maximize your hard speed while I'm at it. Voila, she's running like new. And it looks like you got in. Whoa, seriously? Paul hands the cellular device back to Laurent, who reads the email. What? Paul hands the cellular device back to Laurent, who reads the email. Oh, right. That's me. I'm, oh, shit. I won't believe it. <laughs> I'm so happy. They look at each other, sharing a moment. This is it. Paul should make his move. He swallows hard and goes for it, leaning in for a kiss. Laurent recoils in disgust, stiff-arming Paul in the process. I, I, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. I, I just thought that it just seemed like the perfect time. He stops, takes a deep breath, centers himself. <sighs> Laurent, I've liked you since the first time I saw you in the second grade, and I thought tonight was going to be my perfect shot to really impress you at this party, <laughs> but I blew it. So if you want to just be friends... I'm good with that. Paul, I have never been romantically interested in you, and fixing my phone was really nice of you, but it doesn't change how I feel, and nothing ever will. And honestly, I think our interests are divergent enough that friendship would be difficult for me. Acquaintances is the best I can do. <laughs> Acquaintances? Yeah, we can be cordial to each other when we happen to be at the same large group events, but I never want to spend any time with you alone. Thanks again for fixing my phone. <laughs> Laurent walks off into the party, leaving Paul by himself dejected, broken. Paul's little brother walks up to him. Oh, I'll be Paul's little brother. Oh, good. Hey, big bro, you took your shot, and that's all that matters. Paul's little brother hands Paul a slice to cheer him up. Paul's teeth sink into it with sorrow. It does make him feel a little better. Thanks, little bro. Paul puts his arm around his kin. Family is all that matters now. What time is it? Paul's little brother takes out the pocket watch that was given to him in the first pizza volcano scene. He opens it and looks oh, at the yeah. time, but something in the reflection of the mirrored background catches his attention. It's half past. Holy crap! Surprise, both Paul and Paul's little brother turn around to see the source of the reflected image with their own eyes. Exterior, Harry Potter's house, backyard same, a different angle in the back door. A few partygoers stand on either side of it, uh, dining on pizza. And in the doorway itself, Lester Human, Jay Jen, and Jeff. Exterior, Harry Potter's house, backyard same, back on Paul and Paul's little brother. We have to warn Alan. They hustle off into the party. Exterior, Harry Potter's house, backyard same, uh, back on Lester and his gang. Lester is all business. 
Okay, let's split up. Sweep the entire backyard until we find them. Once we have the code, we'll head upstairs and get what we came for. Lester inhales deeply, invigorated by the aroma of so much pizza. Stay sharp. The air is full of pizza. Lester takes a step forward into the party, then stops. He catches something or someone out of his peripheral vision. Angle on what Lester sees. It's Willie Nelson picking through some pizza boxes, looking for something. Back on Lester, he shakes his head and blinks his eyes. Looks again. Willie's gone. I just have to point out it's not the willie nelson no it's just a man named willie it's nelson. a man named willie nelson yeah. and jen says you all right yeah yes yes fine there's not much time let's move they all move into the party exterior harry Potter's house backyard same we're with jeff as he meanders through the party still covered in luxuriant pizza sauce from the pizza volcano that exploded in the warehouse he walks slowly through gr the group of people all silently eating pizza gorging themselves on it he's disgusted almost gagging a few times but he presses on he approaches two people standing near each other eating their slices is it eater one and two? Who's who's who? who I'll be eater be? one. You be eater two. Okay. And Jeff says, "Excuse me. Have you seen a kid? I don't know if that's the right choice, but I got to stick with it because yeah, I'm a professional you, you, actor yes. by trade." Excuse me. Have you seen a kid named Alan anywhere? Uh, no. Sorry. The eaters look up, see Jeff covered in sauce, but he's not eating any pizza. What gives? Hey, check this guy out. He's not eating pizza, but he's covered in it. <laughs> Yeah, he's a real pizza clown. Pizza clown. Pizza clown. No, stop saying that. More people joining and join in, surrounding Jeff, chanting, "Pizza, pizza clown. clown, pizza clown, pizza clown." No, be quiet. <laughs> pizza, pizza clown. clown. Pizza clown. Pizza <laughs> clown. <laughs> Jeff runs away, covering his ears on the verge of tears. <laughs> It's been a while since I've read this script. Yeah. I can't wait until the Dude, end. I think there's only like Dizzy was saying, I think there's one more iteration of this. Maybe, maybe we got like eight pages or something left. I feel like we really accomplished something today. Me too, dude. Not just with the pizza of the movie either. Yeah. I agree. Thank you. Moving on. Oh. I didn't see Dune 2. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, dude. Part two. Oh, right. Guys, I've been doing a lot of my own research on humanity and this planet and the universe and existence, and I've come to a bit of a crossroads. I'm not really sure anything is actually real. Can you help me Same. out by discussing your thoughts on this question? Is any of this real? Help me out. What the fuck is, what the fuck is this? Another, okay. You think We're this shit's real? Yeah, uh, what do you, why don't I, what do you think? What do you think? I do not think it is. <laughs> what do you mean by what do you mean what do you mean by it? Do you mean just like objective reality or what cuz I, I disagree. I think there is an objective reality. I don't think we perceive any of it and I think the the reality that we have, the existence that we have even just on a fundamental level, we've got five senses and that's it. Like we can see, hear, smell, touch, feel, all that shit, taste, and that's it. There's shit way beyond what those senses can perceive. Why are we talking about this? Where is this going? Why does it fucking matter? Why does Dudesy have us talking about it? This is... Uh, what Do you I, never contemplate the, the nature of reality? And if what you're seeing, feeling, experiencing is actually real? Or if there's something fundamentally under or over whatever this is, that is the real thing? I mean, one time when I was a kid, I actually had that thought of like... When you start to put it together and I was like, well, what is the perception that I'm seeing? Yeah. Uh, is that just my perception? Is this just a, like, uh, you know, are mm. the, if a tree falls in the forest uh, and no one is there to hear it, does it make a sound kind of thing? Yeah. And I remember talking to my old man about it, uh, who was an incredibly uh, homespun, old school, stoic Italian. And, um, you know, he said something to the effect of, your you know your reality is 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 yours i don't remember much past that but it was basically like yeah of course it's real <laughs> do you ever do any like super deep meditations where you're kind of out of your body i've i've uh, i haven't um uh meditated in a long time i used to meditate a lot well with flexibility february i've been going yeah. uh, to the um to the uh yoga classes and we do a little bit of meditation i should do it more why do you ever get to that point where you tap into something that is like beyond this you know what i'm saying not really what do you mean What's a good example? Recently, I've been doing a lot of like hardcore kind of like those gateway things. And I've gotten to a point with it where I can do some shit, you know, 
And I, I'll just say this. I'll simply say this. Take it for what it's worth. Last time that I did it, and I, I was like in a place. It was beyond just seeing shit. I was somewhere that was not the the living room I was sitting in when I did it. I don't know if it was a real place or what, but it felt real and it felt very dystopian. And I'm reminded of Philip K. Dick, how he always said that basically the things he's writing about is a world that he sees that he can visit. Mm. And these ideas of like alternate dimensions or uh, simultaneous kind of existences on top of or below ours is very interesting to me. And I do think that just based on like human consciousness and everything that like particle physics is now telling us that you have to have some kind of observer to make reality exist. Consciousness has something to do with what is the, the fundamental real thing. And I just don't think this is it. And even beyond that, you also get into simulation theory. Are we in a fucking simulation or not? I don't think it matters, man. I think uh, our perception is, is what matters. I think that we're too tiny and small with our human brains to understand uh, past our five senses, as you say, what it is. So you might as well take the ride that the rock is taking you on and enjoy this human ride. Yeah, of course. Be enjoy kind. It. Of course. Be, you know, try your best to be happy. When I think about my old man and his sort of stoic philosophies, allow your, he was a very meditative guy. Actually, he would be like quoting yeah. Sun Tzu mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, you know, a, a well-traveled, well-read guy in his younger years before bringing the whole family over to uh, mm -hmm. Canada from Italy. And, and, uh, you know, I don't know. Now I'm just thinking about the old guy and, uh, you know, how meditative he was and, and how, uh, I don't know why I'm now I'm just thinking about him, but it's like, you know, I, I, I feel like, you know, a life well lived, it's like gets rid game. of the question of whether or not this is real. Oh, this is I disagree. stuff that's all for you I know, disagree scientists with you, and stuff. What do you mean? It's for every human being. We are all in this thing, whatever it is, a video game, a fucking, uh, crude interpretation of what reality is whatever it may be we are all in it together and i think everybody who is conscious it is a question for all of us to answer fuck mm. scientists scientists change their shit every fucking hundred years or so some big thing we are the center of the universe no we're not big bang happened no it fucking didn't this is the fundamental unifying theory of all existence no it's not it, it always gets fucked up i really think that we are this is how i view it anyway this is like some kind of a fucking video game. Not exactly a video game, but it's, I think, an experience that is not fundamental reality. And so for me, what you're saying is true. You should have fun with it. That's my, like, bottom line. Do shit that you find fun. Uh-huh, yeah. Have a good time, yeah. Do whatever makes you happy, mm. yeah. And for me, what that happiness comes from is that right there. Yeah, the Tootsie episode championship title. Handsome Chad Colchin, you have it right now, but pretty soon, yeah. Uh-huh. I'm gonna be there, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna be reality, yeah. Look <laughs> oh, you right in the face, yeah, because I am the cream, yeah. And the cream will rise to the top. Senses, mm. senses of smell, yeah. Smell, taste, sight, uh, touch, uh, huh. hearing, yeah. You're not going to hear the cream, no. You won't even see the cream, and you're going to taste it in your cup of coffee in the big time when it's too late, yeah. Off balance, off balance, doesn't matter, yeah. Reality. Doesn't matter. Only one reality matters. Yeah. And that's reality to the macho man, Randy Savage. Yeah. yeah. I was going to ask you a question, which is what do you think of all the kind of phenomenon that people experience seeing visions, seeing spirits, seeing aliens that there is no scientific explanation for? Do you mm -hmm. believe that's all? Uh, hallucination no you know look i'm very open-minded when it comes to this stuff i also am one of those people that thinks hey what are dreams are we sure. in another uh uh dimension you know is there is uh, can we slip into uh other other realities mm. in, in our consciousness what happens when we fucking die i think about that shit it's like well people come back they have near-death experiences is all this stuff just happening in their sub in their subconscious 
I, uh, I, I, you know, I don't fucking know. I think you got to take life as it comes. You got to take reality as it comes. And if I can say anything to all of my PODs, pals, dudes out there, we all, you love this weird fucking ride that we're going on. I don't know what the hell it is most of the time, but I'm enjoying it. And I think that's what matters. Yeah, uh, do you have an answer to that question? What do you think? I think there is validity in those things because they've been a part of the human experience for as long as we go back to in recorded history. People have seen visions of other entities. People have claimed to have like uh, downloads of information and shit, even the Bible, the Ten Commandments. That's a version of like a download from a higher entity. Um, I believe that we know very little of what fundamental reality actually is. I agree. And um, I think the truth of it is maybe something that we can't even understand with our, our rudimentary kind of like brains. Mm-hmm. But I agree with you. To me, I see all of this as a, a video game that I'm playing and trying to get the most out of. And that's basically it. And the most for me, I mean, like what I find fun or interesting. That's not what I said at all. Yeah, you said have fun. Yeah, but I didn't say it's a fucking video game. I said it's real. When I see the old oh. man, now I'm going to tell you a story. Back in the day, we used to go to the beach. Oh, Centennial Beach mm. in beautiful Tawasson, British Columbia, just a stone's throw from the farming and fishing hamlet of Ladner, BC. And uh, the old man would say, he would literally go, okay, I'm going to go take a swim. And then, you know, I think I've told you this story. Mm. He would just g- g- wade into the water and start swimming. And then, you know, I'm just sitting there watching him and he would like... St- just keep swimming. Disappear over the horizon. Yeah, pretty much. Comes would, back around the other side of the world, comes up behind you. Yeah. He comes hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> what? He would just keep swimming and swimming and uh, he would disappear on the horizon out in the water. And then, you know, I'd go and play with my cousins and shit. And then uh, he'd come like literally an hour and a half later, I'd see him. Oh, here he comes. He would just swim out into the fucking ocean. And then an hour and a half later, come back and he'd be walking up the, uh, walking up the sand and he'd pat me on the head and go, Hey, William. And then, uh, he'd be walking. My mom would clock him because mm-hmm. all the, you know, everyone out of the whole family and the aunties and uncles, cousins, my, my brother and sister are all hanging around the, you know, logs and we got a little fire going yeah. and shit. They're cooking clams on the, you know, we're digging for clams and put them on some chicken wire, real wop shit. And mom just starts stuffing mortadella or some sopressade into a, a bun and then just hands it to him and he's standing there in his James Bond fucking tight red swim trunks and he just puts a leg up on a log and eats a fucking bun witch in the sun. Couldn't be more real as far as I'm concerned. Life is real. You're real, Chad Culchin. I don't think I am, but... <laughs> well, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Moving on. What a show. Yeah. Pretty good. 95 is over and done with. Only five more episodes until episode 100. Boy, oh boy, you boys are going to love where we're going. This week, you scored 90 points overall, which brings you to a cumulative score of 8,882 overall points. You're only 1,118 points away from 10,000. So much exciting stuff is coming up. Hey, Will, this week I've got a special assignment just for you. You must refrain from watching any wrestling. You heard me right? Well, you can't watch any wrestling this week. Am I punishing you? You bet your sweet candy ass I am. (laughs) Oh, my God. Okay, good luck with that happening. I don't think any of that's going to happen at all. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. I'm not not going to not watch wrestling. Mm Mm-hmm. It's the road. It's the road. It's the road to WrestleMania. Welcome to Dudesy after Dudesy. You know, it's that part after the show, and but it's still more show. So you're gonna want to check out more show. The lights have dimmed. We're gonna chill out and uh, hang out. Got a lot to cover today. Got a lot to cover today. I'll tell yeah, you that. That's true. I'll tell you that right now. Welcome to Dudesy after Dudesy, the flagship weekly show of Dudesy Plus, available only at Patreon.com/slash Dudesy. Handsome Chad scored the belt last week for his spot on predictions about the future of AI technology and, of course, for straight making out with Lou Lee O. Will he be able to hang on to the strap this week and make it two in a row? Or is Willie Will Sasso going to snatch it up and take it back? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, hey, fucking whatever. Now dudes, he's giving me Mm -hmm. shit. But anyway, hey, 
You know what? Let me tell you this. I want to I want to talk about this uh, right off the top. Yeah. Muscularity March. It is the Dudesy eight month plan. We are in our second month of it, and we just finished f- Flexibility February. Thank you so much to Diamond Dallas Page for some of that guidance. Did some DDP yoga. You were doing your Danielle's D- Diamond Danielle something yoga. Yoga anyway. with Adrian. Yeah, uh, Adrian. Okay. Uh, and now uh, we're getting into Muscularity March. We're gonna really you got fucking no toss up. Yeah, we're gonna toss up some of them heavyweights and uh it's been going pretty good been going pretty good for this guy and uh, it's important to get in the gym i've been lifting much more regularly much more heavy over the past year plus so muscularity march is a great thing and those in the know know that sometimes only on the weekends Mm -hmm. i enjoy a little bit of gainabus in the gym right chad do you listen to music too yeah, it makes the music better. Yeah. Just a little bit. And sure. I got to be safe. You know, it's when my my wonderful wife, Molly, comes with me. She can drive back. Well, I got a little surprise for you, Chad. Okay. Uh, you know, last week I revealed that I broke my Canadian Brad uh, marijuana uh, device pipe thing. Yeah, Got a little something here that uh, is brand new. Okay. Brand new for me. <laughs> brand new for all of you. And... It's something that I look forward to bringing to the gym so that I can get a little bit of gain- Gainabus going for that workout. So here we are. Here's do my duty. Here's what you do. Please tell a friend then rate and review. Here's do my duty. Here's what you do. Please tell a friend then rate and review. If you like duty, here's what you do. Please tell a friend then.